There are 8 billion people in the world. How do you stand out and make a name for yourself? How can you be irreplaceable? How can you be the most sought out person in your industry? Is there a shortcut? Well, there is. And today's talk is all about that. Let me not keep you waiting and tell you a quick answer for that. And the quick answer for it is to be a specialist. Now, who is a specialist? Let me explain that to you with a simple example. Say your neighbor or a friend has a heart problem. Whom will they go to for the heart surgery? Will they go to a general practitioner for their heart surgery? No, right? Of course, they're going to go to a heart surgeon. This is specialization in simple words. But wait, who am I and why am I talking about specialists? Hi, I am Ashwini Nathan, a photographer who specializes in maternity and newborn photography. I am an official Nikon creator and I've worked with hundreds of newborn babies and numerous celebrities. Today, I'll take you through my journey and show you how specializing helped me to stand out in this chaotic and crowded photography market. In this talk, you can also take away a few points which you can implement in your career goals to make you the most sought out person in your industry and also get paid as much as you want to. In this generation of FOMO, where FOMO stands for fear of missing out, where one wants to do anything and everything the next person is doing, it's important to pause and reflect. What you're doing is really what you like to do or are you doing it just to stay relevant? When I say pause and reflect, it simply means to realize what you're doing right now and what you like to do in future. Whether you're an employee in a company or you want to start your own business and be an entrepreneur, what path you're taking is important. Are you taking a generalist path or are you taking a specialist path? Who is a generalist? A generalist is the one who knows about many things and does a little bit of everything. Say you know about human resource, marketing, social media, HR, making websites and a bunch of few other things, then you are a generalist. As a generalist, you may think companies may line up to employ you as you are a multitasker, right? Wrong. In fact, being a generalist is like you're spreading yourself thin and making yourself as a commodity where someone else can command a prize over your skill or the work you do. On the other hand, if you are a specialist and you delve deep into one subject, refine your niche and know in and out of that industry, then it is easier for you to, to make yourself as an influencer or an authority in the industry you're working in. As, as a specialist, you also have special skills, the core expertise in your industry, which many people in your peers don't have. To elaborate it with my example, had I done every kind of photography like travel, babies, portraits, wildlife, food photography and events, probably Tiny Ones Photography, the name of my photography brand, wouldn't have been what it is today. Why, why, why do clients choose Tiny Ones Photography? Because the name Tiny Ones and the work we do is synonymous with that phase of a woman when she is pregnant and she delivers the baby. So much so that I deal with a lot of high risk pregnancies and premature babies. Let me explain that to you with the client situation. So we had a client who had come into my studio. We had her uh, shoot date set. We had figured out our outfits. Everything was set. Two weeks later, she calls me saying, Ashwini, there's a situation and we may have to prepone the shoot. I said, okay, what happened? Apparently, she was admitted to hospital twice as her amniotic fluid was leaking. And the doctor had told when she comes to the checkup next time, if the fluid low level is still low. So she calls me in panic saying that I really want to do this shoot as I'm really not sure if I'm going to have the second baby. And if I don't do this shoot, I may not have my pregnancy memories at all. So we had to prepone her shoot. She came into the studio. We gave her poses that she can manage. We gave her ample rest. And today she has those memories which are frozen in time as pictures which will last through her lifetime and beyond through generations. Again, why did she choose me in that delicate phase? That is because we work day in and day out with newborn babies and pregnant women and she was confident that I can pull it off very easily. As a specialist, if you are doing one thing and one thing only, there is no way you can get noticed. There is no way you cannot get noticed. They say riches are in the niches. While a generalist claims general income, a specialist claims premium dollars. As a specialist, it's not only about making money, it also shows that as an individual, you have 
the focus and the expertise to be excelled in one field and you are most desirable for companies as your career focus is extremely targeted and you have a competitive edge over your peers. Say, where do parents go to buy childcare essentials online? First cry, right? Where do all girls go and buy their makeup supplies? Nika. Why doesn't Amazon, Flipkart or Misho sell makeup supplies and childcare essentials? Of course it does. Of course it does. But still, why is First Cry the choice for parents and Nika the choice for girls? This is a fine example of specialization. What First Cry and Nika did was niching down and focusing so that they can stand out in the crowded online market space. This makes specialists not only eliminate the competition, but they're also 10 steps, 10 steps ahead of their competition. In my example, had I done every kind of photography, probably clients would have not chosen this and they would have gone with somebody who done, does everything, right? Since we do just this, it's very easy for them to know us and recognize us as specialists. Say you have a baby and they want to get the shoot done for their baby, right? They're going to go with somebody who does everything. It is an easy choice. But still, why are they coming to us? Why are they choosing tiny ones? How are we booked out months in advance? How are we paid a premium to travel across India and get the memories for babies and their pregnant mommies? That is because we are specialists and parents trust only a specialist to give their delicate newborns into the hands of someone who does this every day than somebody who does maybe who does this maybe you know not so regularly. Okay, you know the advantages of being a generalist and a specialist, but are there any disadvantages of being specialists? The main two common arguments against specialists are the first one being doing the same thing again and again may make them monotonous, make their work monotonous. And the second argument being that the technology or the profession they are working on may become obsolete. In fact, as creatives, doing the same thing again and again will make us boring and we end up we end up changing the game and innovating. For example, if you see the next slide, we usually wrap babies with cute different patterns of wraps, right? But when we tie the bonnet or the hat to the babies, we usually used to hide away the bonnet ties or the thread from the picture. What I thought was, if I'm, why, why don't I innovate here and try to do the bonnet ties in different styles so it brings out the beauty in the image. So you can see I've tried different styles of bonnet ties here which has actually aesthetically improved the beauty of the image and babies look even more cuter with the different wraps and different styles of bonnet ties. Again, the second question where the, the, and the main disadvantage of being a specialist is where the profession or the technology the specialist is working on may become obsolete. In that case, again, I have two points to counter this argument. The first one being, if you are a specialist or a generalist, it doesn't matter. If you're not constantly learning and upgrading your skills, it is super difficult for you to survive in any environment or any industry. For example, 13 years back when I started photography, DSLRs were ruling the market. Today, mirrorless cameras are trending. As professionals, if you are not constantly upgrading our skills and being on par with technology, then sooner or later, we may be losing the game and eventually be left out of the race. The moral of the story here is whether you're a specialist or a generalist, embrace the change and innovate constantly. And the second point to counter the argument of the technology or the profession being obsolete is building secondary skills. What are secondary skills? Let me explain. Being a photographer and not knowing about human math is useless. Being a photographer and not understanding the client behavior or human psychology doesn't make sense. Being very strong in editing and lighting and not understanding how to market my brand does not take me anywhere. I can only survive, but goes only so far. To go to that extra mile and achieve the career goals that you have set for yourself, it is important for you to pick up the secondary skill, which will complement your main primary skill. Let me explain that to you with this T model. Consider this T model where we have a horizontal line and a vertical line. The horizontal skills which you have, which you may not be very proficient in, but you are having some information about it. Consider the vertical line where you are having your core skills and expertise. For example, 
my secondary skills are communication branding social media marketing and editing but my primary deep skill is in newborn and maternity photography so what so if you can see here the newborn and maternity photography is my current primary skill okay tomorrow later say i'm not excited by photography and i want to do something else i can easily pick up any one of these secondary skills and then delve deep into it and get a level of success what i've got right now because the formula in my life is if i would done it once i if i've done it once i can do it again okay now that you know uh, how to overcome the disadvantage of being a specialist now comes the question who do you start off as with do you start off being a specialist and then be a generalist or do you start off being a generalist and then go on to be a specialist it's like you are chasing two rabbits and getting none or chasing two rabbits or chasing one rabbit and eventually you will get that rabbit and what if you realize later that the rabbit you have got is what you don't like let me explain that in a generalist mindset you chase two rabbits and eventually end up getting none in a specialist mindset you chase only one rabbit and you eventually get that rabbit if you have caught the rabbit that you have liked your life is set you have hit the jackpot everything perfect what if you realize the rabbit you have caught is not the one that you have liked that is where all the years of your experience goes in vain so how do we overcome this the idea here is to do a little bit of everything and then realize what you really like to do in my case i knew i loved photography but i was told at home to be an engineer just like all south indian parents my parents too told me please be engineer first then after marriage if your husband agrees you can be a photographer so i did the same thankfully my husband did agree he allowed me to do photography he encouraged me to do photography so i eventually became a photographer but as i tell i this i joke around saying this to everyone that basic qualification for every photographer must be engineering <laughs> after all 90% of the photographers today are engineers okay jokes apart i knew i loved photography but since i topped my class in college i thought i'm very good at coding which i was i was in tcs as an it developer for 5 years and i quit my it job as soon as my son was born but later when i quit my job i was sitting at home bored and i quizzed myself what do i like to do what are my passions and what can i involve myself in and the obvious answer was photography but i was so confused what niche in photography do i follow as i said that time what made more sense to me was to follow what was matching my requirements at that time we as a family we travel a lot all around the world and in india so i chose travel photography as it was a easy and a option that was very valid for me at that point in time as i told we travel all across india we drive around india we rent cars abroad we explore the country on our own it made more sense for me to do travel photography and also while in college i was very good at writing i had a flair for writing i had and i had my personal blog so i thought why not i mix these two together and make a travel blog it's called hopping miles it's on uh, internet you can see but it's not been updated in the past 6 years because i was very busy with tiny ones photography so i started hopping miles and i was diligently following that for the past for the 3 years when i started hopping miles i achieved uh, some accolades and i got a few recognition but still i was not able to achieve that level of success which i wanted to in hopping miles because of few limitations as i told we were traveling with family i couldn't make my family wait for to get that sunrise or the sunset shot or we couldn't travel to certain roads because the roads were bumpy as we were traveling with my aged in laws so when i was navigating through all these challenges i came across newborn photography and newborn photography interested me like anything and i started delving more deep into it and started to learn nuances from my mentors abroad and when i thought of starting newborn photography in india it made more sense because there was nobody in india who did newborn photography only while photographers were doing kids photography of all ages as i told there was no specialist of newborn photography in india so i started tiny ones photography the name made more sense to me at that time because i had decided to do newborns only but way back in 2018 when i started tiny ones photography the concept of newborn photography was not that relevant and parents were not allowing their children to take the newborn baby to somebody else's studio to get a photo 
shoot done. So girls were calling me saying that Ashwini, if you do my maternity shoot, I can make you familiar with my family and it will be easier for me to convince them to allow the baby to come to you and get the photo shoot done. So from then, I decided I'll do maternity and newborn, newborn only and I have st stuck to that niche from the past six years. But through this entire phase, what was happening is, I was picking up my secondary skills while I was building all my passions. For example, my software development career helped me to build the Tiny Ons website and the Hopping Miles website. And while dabbling with Hopping Miles, I went deep into Instagram, social media, all especially Instagram, which helped me to build a cult and organic following for Tiny Ons Photography Instagram. See what happened there. I was just building my secondary skills on the T model and delved deep into one primary skill that is newborn and maternity photography. To elaborate this, let me give you a very common example. We all know Amazon, right? Amazon started as a book selling company. Okay. Later, it went ventured into toys and DVDs. Later, Amazon started selling essentials. Today, Amazon sells everything from music to movies. We all know about Nike. Nike started selling as an athletic footwear company. Today, Nike sells everything related to athletics from sports jerseys to socks. Had they done the opposite, I don't think Nike would have got that level of success. So get the sequencing right. Start off being a specialist and then you can be a generalist. The same thing with Tiny Ons. Had I started doing everything, I don't think we would have got the recognition and the brand name what we have got today. And also not only that, I don't think personally I would have picked up those fine skills which made me a specialist, a true specialist in this field. Today, if I want, I can broaden my niche. I can spread my wings into toddler photography or any other kind of baby photography. It is not that difficult. People already know my brand name. It is very easy for me to set a, another brand which encompasses and I can spread my wings. But get the sequencing right. Start off being a specialist and then you can spread your wings to be a generalist. I would like to end this talk by telling this quote. The one who follows the crowd will get usually no further than the crowd. The one who walks alone is likely to find himself in places that no one has ever been. This quote is very deep, isn't it? Who do you want to be? Do you want to be a layman or a disruptor? Do you want to be just another employee or the OG? Do you want to be jack of all trades or master of one? You choose. Thank you.